Hi everyone. Um, so I'm gonna talk about this module, the AI interpolator, and its uh, sub-modules or plugins uh, that I have developed so far. Um, it was released today in alpha mode. Before before I start talking a little bit about the about the background, uh, I will say that I will showcase how it works. This will come later in the video. I will make it clickable or write something in the description for anyone that doesn't really care about the history of the module but just want to see how it's being used. Right? I will also spend some time on actually installing it so you see how it, it gets installed. Um, but first history then. So the idea of the AI interpolator module was very easy. So it started in my company. I needed to do some summarization, some sentimental analysis of texts. And in the beginning, when I was trying out like the GPT API from OpenAI, I started hard coding it. And this was, of course, not scalable. So I thought about, yeah, let's create a module that can take, you know, a text field and generate the output in another text field. But then I realized pretty soon that this should be even more scalable, more flexible. Um, I get requests from people within my company that are not developers that might want to actually play around with this themselves. Uh, and Drupal has a GUI, so it's a very good tool for actually doing this. Um, so because of that, I thought, well, let's scale it up then instead and, and make something that's completely reusable for interpolating one field to another. Uh, so the idea is very simple. You have a field, you uh, put some content in it, and this can then be interpolated into another field via AI, but it doesn't have to be AI. So that's why it was a little bit bad naming, but this was the name I went with from the beginning, so I kind of kept it. So this all the submodules does not necessarily use AI or AI services. Some just use pure PHP code, basically. Um, and the reason why we, uh, well, my company allowed me to open source is open source it, and I'm very thankful for that. I will do a shout out here to my company then Oliver Schrott Communication. Um, I can say one of uh, the reasons we can have it is that we are uh, first of all we have plugins ourselves that we use ourselves so if there's something that you can't figure out how to do with it and you might want either help to build it we have services to build that of course and uh, we also have plugins for uh, that we can offer already made uh, that might output things that's not available in the open source modules. Uh, but there was some reasons besides that. So this is not a commercial for our uh, company. I'm just mentioning it. But there was some other reasons that was pretty obvious. And one is something like this will be done for Drupal. Someone will create it for Drupal. And uh, the problem is if we set up a lot of projects for customers using our proprietary code, and then there comes a standard way of doing this in Drupal, we get double work. So because of that, it was better maybe to open source it. And hopefully, maybe, let's see, it could become a standard, at least from field to field interpolation using AI. Uh, the other reason is that it's completely plugin based. So the module by itself doesn't do much, which uh, of course means that anyone that wants to contribute can contribute. Uh, right, so, uh, and the third thing, of course, is that please find bugs. When you find bugs, please report them. We want to make this as stable as possible. It's currently in alpha mode. It's not really production ready, um, maybe for certain use cases, but it should be as generic as possible and work everywhere, basically. Uh, and the module, as I said, it's it's by itself, it doesn't do anything. It just exposes a plugin API, or it exposes two plugin APIs actually, but there's one plugin API that's important. And that's the thing where you can basically create a plugin that says, these are the field types that I can take as input. These are the field types that I can create as output, right? Uh, and I will go through those now. 
well, I can say the other plugin uh, type is processors. So that's how it's generated. There is one plugin here, then post OB processor that can extend the processors that comes with the core AI interpolator uh, module. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I will just quickly go through them. So there is the OpenAI one that can do a lot of stuff, uh, you know, summarize, analyze, categorize, generate text. There, there's, there's a lot of use cases I probably didn't think about. Dream Studio is uh, stable diffusion. So basically just take a text field and create an image. The opposite then is CNX where you take an image and you get a text description of what's happening in that image. There's a scraping bot. Uh, please note that this has some special installation instructions that I have already done. You have to add these to your composer JSON and uh, first require this before you get anything else. Uh, that module, I mean, everything I show you now will be composer based. Most of the modules you can probably download uh, using the old like method you used to do in Drupal 7, but I would recommend if everyone to use Composer for this. Extractor then is to extract images, files, links, emails from texts, which is very good together with scraping, of course, because you could actually maybe even do migration from Drupal 7. If you have a public website, you don't want to play around with a migration module, maybe you can actually extract everything you need from this into structured data. Simple crawler is similar to scraping but it's just free it's not a service but of course this uses guzzle which means it can only scrape uh, server-side rendered content it can't run javascript uh, plus scraping bot has other uh, features like it can run from proxies from certain countries which is which is very good if you're for instance like me you're sitting in germany and want to scrape an american website that doesn't allow europe because of gdpr then you can scrape via us instead 11 labs field you can look in my video history this is another uh, drupal module i did so this can create uh, audio from text for accessibility but in this case you can even do complete dialogues podcast stories from some kind of context right uh and then uh yeah the post ob processor we're not i'm not going to showcase that that's but it's for api usage basically so when you want to do all this but you want to do it via api because maybe uh, you're working with some other software stack but you still want to be able to create some uh, chaining workflow right uh, where you want to add an input and get the output but then you can do that over json api and graphql and still continue using whatever uh whatever you know, framework or framework or coding language you want. So I'm gonna start by installing these now. And it's, uh, yeah, you can see it here, right? Uh, I'm using Doxal, which is like, you know, DDEV, Lando, all those tools. Uh, so that's why I prefix it with fin on this installation I do. So I'm just gonna get the package right and then I'm gonna start getting all uh, the other packages here so we have open AI let's see oh you saw there I actually had the interpolator module already um, and then we have dream studio So let's see what else we have. We have scraping bot. Now I just have to check the list here even. Scene X, because I will actually go through all of them. Um, so you get some idea what you can do here. Not simple crawler, that's actually not that uh, important. 11 labs field. So, and that should hopefully be everything we need. Uh, then I go, so this is basically my base uh, Drupal installation. I've installed the administration, admin toolbar, I mean, uh, module. That's the only thing, otherwise it's a base Drupal installation. I've removed the base node types. So that's what I'm gonna show some example what we can do here. So what I need to do now then is just uh, 
install all these modules I added. So we install them and then we're gonna start with the most simple example then which we were talking about. So we're gonna add a content type called oh that's comment types content types is what we want article right which has a title I'm gonna remove the regu regular uh, body and summary because I want to keep those as separate fields so I create just a um, text formatted long right this is the article text we're gonna use uh, we allow full HTML there uh, oh sorry that I didn't want to uh, check yet so this is an article we can just add an article here I'm just gonna steal something from CNN right so uh, I will take this one maybe and I'm just gonna copy parts of it so uh, oops oh, wait we do like this we can actually have it a little bit styled because then we can even get the images here because then I can show you something else we can do maybe uh, we save this and all of a sudden you know I have the article here right so now I want a summary thing I talked about so we just go back to the let's open this in a tab we go to manage field and we create a text format long that should be a summary um, and that can be basic HTML and now then because we have enabled uh, the AI interpolator module there is a checkbox called enable in AI interpolator and this is then the the field that we are uh, pushing something to so in this case we're gonna create a summary right um, and depending on what you install here you're gonna have different rules available so in this case I have the open AI text long which is basically take some field and do something with a prompt uh, to this there's image description so if I had an image fields I could uh, take that image fields image and create a description Scraping bot crawler is to take a link and scrape that link and create a, put that in a text area. I'm gonna show that later. So now we take OpenAI text long. Uh, if you have tokens modules, there's an advanced mode you can use because you might want to generate something from multiple fields. But in this case, I'm just gonna showcase the easy base mode. Uh, so you just take the base field. This is the field you're gonna interpol interpolate from, which is the article in this case. And then you can just do based on the context, create a summary of 200 characters, right? And context is, and then you have the placeholders available. In this case, we just have the clean text from the base field, so it removes the HTML. You can do the raw context as well. Max amount, if you, have, uh, if you don't have one or unlimited, uh, you could use this because you might want to create exactly three texts but you might want to change this dynamically then you can use the placeholder instead edit when change means just you if the article text gets changed the summary should also get changed this can be important but um yeah I, I'll, I will keep it like it is right now uh, and the thing is if this text field is empty so you don't fill it out manually it will be in uh, interpolated by the AI module then then there is weight and I will show this later why this is important so that's when you're chaining stuff but I'm not gonna chain anything now in the beginning so I'm just gonna create the summary right uh, and then you have the worker processes so there's basically three there's the direct worker and this just hooks into when it's saving does all the work and saves it and that's it and this it's okay if you have very quick processes but of course you know web servers and PHP uh, workers and so on they have they run out of time because they have timeouts right so if you add a lot of interpolation on every entity save this is not gonna work uh, so because of that there's two others and there's the third and the oh, fourth that you can choose via uh, extra module that I talked about before 
so there's QCron. What that does, it, it creates queue workers. So it basically tells Drupal, hey, there's something in the queue that you should work on the next time you run queue workers via <coughs> Drush then. Um, but this has the disadvantage, it takes time before they show up, right? And then you have batch, and this is if you know that you're just gonna use the GUI for it, because this will not work with uh, programmatic, uh, programmatically created entities. It will not work with an API, for instance. But I will showcase that now, because now we're just working with the GUI. So this uses the batch API that uh, you should know if you're a developer builder. Um, then you can choose the open AI, mod AI model. This is specific for this um, this rule, of course. Same with the open AI role, but we just keep 3.5 turbo. Uh, moderation means that it uh, asks this to a moderation endpoint first by open AI. You should always keep this on because the problem is if you take an article, I didn't really read the article I added now, right? Maybe that has hate speech in it or racism or porn or something that goes against OpenAI's rules, if you break them too much, they're gonna suspend your service and then your whole website goes down, right? So this goes into a moderation endpoint and checks first if it's okay. The reason why I even made it an option is that if you are in complete control of your content, you can turn it off because of course it takes longer to make two requests every time you want to do something. But as a rule of thumb, just keep it on. Uh, and now the interesting thing then, we have the summary here, it's empty, right? If I fill it out, nothing will happen. It will save whatever I fill it out because I fill it out manually. But right now I'm just gonna save. We got to go into the batch mode. It's asking GPT now to create a summary. And if we go down, we have a summary here, right? And this is how all the interpolation works. Uh, so now I'm gonna do a chain interpolation just for the uh, so you understand how chaining works. So what I'm gonna do now is create another uh, text format long and call that image prompt. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a header image for instance uh, for this article. But to do this we need a prompt, right? Uh, so we enable the AI interpolator again, still open AI text long, <coughs> still the article, and then based on the context, create a vivid uh, description of a scene that could be painted uh, that describes the context or parts of it. Um, well, that's uh, that's good, I guess. Maximum 150 characters. No, maximum, let's say, 20 words. Uh, context is then the context. So now it's going to create an image prompt for us. Um, and this, of course, is important now that I think about weight. So this is 100. We can keep that at 100. Then I'm going to create an image field now then. Uh, we call that header image then. Uh, public files, we want one. Uh, so the rules you set here, it actually follows. So uh, this is important, especially for the extractor that where you don't know how many fields you get. So you see there are some other stuff here, but we want to use the Dream Studio image generator in this case. We want to generate one. So this follows the amount you set. If you set unlimited, I think it creates 10 by default because they are expensive. So don't create too many, right? Image prompt, uh, then just context. With stable diffusion, there are these things that makes the prompt better, like saying uh, a short depth of field, you can mention a camera, you can Google this and there's even prompt directories, I'm not gonna make the perfect image now. And in general, prompting in itself is a, is a art form, right? So you, you might need to try until you find all the things you want, right? Uh, so this is the prompt we send to Stable Diffusion to create the image, right? 
So context is the prompt that will get be generated by the other field. So in this case, we have to set uh, interpolator weight higher. Oh, there is something I forgot here. That's why you don't see any Dream Studio engine. So when you install all these, you actually have to, of course, uh, add your API keys. So I'm gonna do this here, but I'm gonna do it so you don't see it because I don't wanna share my API key with everyone. Uh, so then it's saved and we try to uh, reload. Now we have to do everything again. I forgot this actually, this is important. Uh, now we see it because I added the key, right? So we do context and Canon EOS uh, short depth of field. Yeah, uh, we, I just I'm not gonna create the perfect image now. So I just do something quickly. Batch and here you see I set a weight that's higher uh, than the image prompt because the image prompt has to be generated before the image gets generated because otherwise the image has nothing to go on, right? And then you can choose the uh, engine you want to use, right? So I will use 2.0 in this case. We go back to our article. Well, first maybe <coughs> we just set the header image at the top. Oh, we will see our result here. Of course, you should use like field groups or something here to, to uh, make everything look nicer. But now you see it creates an image prompt first and then the, creating the image takes a little bit longer. That's a pretty slow process. And then, okay, <laughs> this was horrible, to be honest. I'm not even sure. Let's see what the prompt was. A, a vibrant painting shows Polish yet fighter yet soaring over Ukraine's. Okay, yeah. So stable diffusion is nowhere near mid-journey. Unfortunately, mid-journey doesn't have API yet. So that's why I haven't created a plugin. Dali 3 is gonna come soon and that's probably gonna be a lot better. But yeah. Um, you have to play around with finding perfect prompts here as well. This was actually a horrific image. Let's just, what you can do if you're not happy with it, you can just remove it, right? And then it's gonna create a new one. So let's try that. Let's see if it gets us horrific again. Um, oh, that's even worse. Oh, it's using, okay, so the, the Adding Canon EOS was maybe not a super uh, idea there. Anyway, there are people that are a lot better at prompting than me that can figure out the correct prompt here. So <laughs> next step, we want to cat categorize this. So we're gonna go into taxonomy and add a vocabulary called uh, topics, right? And topics could have Ukraine because this was about Ukraine. And it can have Poland because this was about Poland and it can have war because this was about war. And then we say uh, Pokemon. I hope it wasn't about Pokemon. And we say Star Wars. It shouldn't have been about Star Wars. And we uh, say um, a country that shouldn't be there, I guess. Japan is not mentioned anywhere, right? So we save that. So we have a taxonomy. Uh, go to manage fields, create a new field called, that is a taxonomy term field called topics then. Uh, we say we can choose many. Take whatever fits, right? Should be the topics. And then we can enable AI interpolator. Same thing here, there's an open AI taxonomy. <coughs> Sorry, use the article as a base field. I'm just actually gonna open and inspect and copy this because this is a pretty good uh, prompt I'm gonna add so you can have default prompts here also. So based on the context text shows shows up to five categories we can say. Now it shows up to ten categories. From the category context that fits the text, category options, value options, comma. So the value options comma then, that's the taxonomy list as a comma separated list which would mean basically Poland comma, Ukraine comma, or comma Japan and whatever we had. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, so the other thing you have is then value options NL, uh, which is new line. 
so they come in new line that might work something might work better than the uh, other one sometimes right um, in this case we put turn on batch and in general when it comes to categorization sentiment analysis some a little bit more complex textual processes use GPT-4 it costs more it's slower but it gives a lot better results so now I will click edit here save it and this topics field should hopefully be filled out with Poland war Ukraine then would make sense right and we have it here Ukraine Poland war so it has gone ahead and categorized for us which is uh, yeah it's pretty cool right um, so uh, the oh I'm just gonna do one thing I'm gonna jump in here and install um, I'm gonna install FFmpeg and I will show you why FFmpeg is actually important. Um, so we install FFmpeg, it will take some time, we do that in the background. So I'm gonna create another uh, workflow now, create another content type we call um, image advertisement. Uh, and we don't want a body. It always adds a body. Oh yeah, also so you know you can attach this to any entity of course, custom entity. You should not usually nodes is a bad thing to use in general. Um, we create that image and the image field is in this case should not be the um, should not be what we interpolate to, but this is actually gonna be the source in this case. So we should allow JPEGs is important. I save settings uh, and then I create a new field called text format long dis oh, image description we call that and one can be basic HTML enable AI interpolator in this case we're gonna do CNEX image description oh I will have to go ahead and actually put my API key there as well. But then we do outside so you don't see it. Uh, let me see, where do I have my API key here? API, I guess. Uh, generate secret. Uh, okay. Oh, this was slow. So anyway while that's happening we do this it should have a batch and this should happen oh so here it was finished I just saved that so that should happen first maybe we have 100 on that so we just try this now then I try it here I have to reload content and content image advertisement let's find some cool product what's what 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 is cool say iphone uh, or maybe iphone is too simple i guess uh, let's take a car instead jeep jeep renegade that sounds like something cool uh i want something with a background we just open this Oh, not the AVIF. I want that JPEG, please. Uh, this is cool. This is good. So, uh, we upload this image. We call it our Jeep Adver Advertisement. So, the first step now is... I mean you could chain it from the beginning but I will show it step by step now so I save this and this is hopefully now gonna read a fairly good description from the Jeep image so you see here the image shows a green Jeep renegade driving down a road blah 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 right so my next step would be so say that I want first to create a uh, oh right we had it there uh, an advertisement in text form we just text text format long advertisement uh, and basic HTML 
same as before image description based on the context text create a one sentence advertisement slogan maybe context and that's the context right important now now I already saved it but is that the weight is higher we save it click edit resave it we have advertisement here right uh, and now I'm gonna show you the 11 labs module so but once again I have to add my API key so I should maybe have prepared this before I showed you but I wanted to show you how everything basically is being set up so we save that so now I have API key there uh, here you see unleash your adventure with the green jeep renegade yeah maybe not the best one but that uh, is once again prompting so now I will show you something much much cooler then so we have a 11 labs field uh, and we call this the the sound adver advertisement right and it should be one and uh, in this case we want to enable AI interpolator again but before I do that I'm gonna show you something else because this will create many 11 labs field because 11 labs works especially if you if you have a dialogue between two people it creates one mp3 for the first sentence one for the second so on and you want to concatenate this right you want to have one mp3 so we're just gonna add another f uh, audio field here called the audio file right uh, that only takes mp3s then and it's important that this is unlimited to be able to uh, be chained and that it's mp3 so this is gonna chain on to the uh, sound advertisement field so everything that the 11 labs fields does it's gonna concatenate so now I can do, say here concatenate this file right and here's the cool thing I can add a soundscape so in this case we're gonna create an advertisement so I think I should have somewhere here some music maybe this motivational music let's listen to this I don't know what it is yeah that that's probably good so um, we say that it should only be 30 behind 30 percent volume I mean sorry then you can say how long it should play if it you want it to fade out while they're talking but in this case it should play all the time we have a padding before so play some music before the person stops talking play some after fade it out these are only available if you have FFmpeg on your server that's very important because it's what's uh, basically cutting everything together then enable AI interpolator I did that module by the way so if there is a combination between these that doesn't work just let me know because I work on both modules uh, so you have the 11 uh, dialog creator which is a AI interpolator rule we take that from the advertisement again no we take it from the image description sorry uh, and here based or actually let's me just copy this because the format that's being used in the end there is pretty good to follow so placeholders in this case is all the 11 labs voices so I'm gonna use Freeman that has a very deep voice good for uh, advertisement so Freeman is equals Freeman right and then based on the context create an a uh, radio advertisement of one sentence using Freeman uh, using the voice of Freeman uh, the target group is uh, young male adults uh, look for wild adventures let's say that's the prompt right so then we can go into advanced settings because once again we have to run this after take GPT-4 is probably better at this jingle thing save it 
and click edit and click save and now it's um, well creating an advertisement for us hopefully uh, and after that it's generating this audio so that will take some time and then concatenating it and we have this audio file in the end so this is our advertisement now Unleash your inner adventurer with a bold green Jeep Renegade, made for those who crave spontaneous road trips and captivating journeys. So that's pretty cool, right? It creates a, a sound advertisement from our image, basically. So now we didn't run the whole chain through, we ran it once. It's, I mean, we ran one job first and then the second, but it would run it through if I would upload an image now. So then we have a sound advertisement connected to this. Um, uh, so a cut happened there because I uh, I was saying goodbye, but I realized I have another workflow that I wasn't showing. That's probably interesting to see. So let's take this while we we're at it so we're gonna create another content type and this is the thing i talked about before where you might have a public web page that you want to migrate from you don't want to write i mean with drupal 7 to drupal 10 there is migrate module that's pretty cool but say there's uh something else you don't want to write database scripts or you know json exports csv exports i don't know and it's publicly available well what you can do is this then so i'm there is the scraping part right so if what you can do is you use the link as the base create a link just uh, save take external links we don't care about link text at this case text text formatted long and we call that raw html so we want to get the raw html of a uh, website and we enable the AI interpolator and it should have scraping bot crawler right takes the link and it has some settings here so you can use Chrome which is very good it can render JavaScript you can wait for network which is very good when it's not server-side rendered you can choose your proxy country um, you can use premium proxies if you want to look like you're actually surfing from a home rather than a, a server and you can choose then what do you want to get so you can get a raw dump you get all the html and that's what we're going to get in this case you can use readability which takes the text content or uh, that's the thing that firefox uses by the way to get this and it's an open source project from firefox html selector is similar to jquery so you want you know you want a specific part of a web page you can use this and this is going to give more options then but in this case we're going to use raw dump uh, batch it say 95 save and um, let's see here the page we're gonna do uh, I don't know if there's a good page here to use with some text and some images maybe uh, let's try this let's see how good it will work with this so we're gonna add a web page and I'm just gonna add test as a title because I will show you something else because the title is Drupal for fintech I guess uh, then you see it got it um, and you can in theory I guess I didn't choose the best I oh, let's see what happened there uh, I guess the CSS even might be disrupting our CSS because we're both using <laughs> Drupal actually that's uh, that's a first actually um so um just to hide that let's do this we just remove it from the form display uh yeah so that's better so um the other thing i want to get is the actual text there then so we go to the manage field again create a new field text formatted long call this text we actually do the same thing but in this case uh, we're just gonna allow uh, oh sorry we want the scraping bot crawler link and we just want the readability right 
and let's do this lower again uh, oh let me check something maybe I've, no that was not the problem so we save again uh, and then it's supposedly just getting the text uh, which is here, right? Triple securities, backbones, uh, blah, blah, blah. Which is this. So it understood this was a header and this is the text, right? Uh, so then we have the main text. And what's uh, interesting now, maybe, oh, we can remove the raw HTML because we're just gonna do that to uh, extract things. So I, I reload and then you have the text here. Um, say now uh, that we want to get all the links from this because we need it for whatever reason what we can do then is to create a link field where are you there uh, pages links we can call it uh, save it oh sorry can have multiple links of course so and now I have to go no page links to go back there and say that we want to enable the AI interpolator. Uh, oh, maybe I did not add the extractor. Let's see. So I did forget to actually install a module here. So let's jump out because we got the FFM peg there. So oh, here we get the extractor. And I will in oh let's see here da, 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 da. is it like this maybe alpha two perhaps let's see what we have what is the package name e e Oh, so I haven't maybe actually. <laughs> Let's see if I haven't actually added the package. I'm gonna do this on another screen now, so you don't see this. Um, so it's the extractor we want. Add new release. I hope I pushed the code. Let's see. Sorry for this. A little bit confused here. Uh, first release and new feature save. Let's see if something shows up here now. There, Drupal has its cache, of course, so it takes some time. But I guess the it should be more or less added directly. New. Uh, let's see how long time it takes for it to publish to Composer. There it is. Let's see if it's there also. So sorry about that. So this will be available now for you, of course. Um, if I now I have to reload here. No, oh, first of course I have to enable it install it so because this was not enabled now it didn't show up here of course that's the whole idea of the main uh, module to look for plugins that fits so now there's link extractor and this is what we want so we want the um, I guess we can take the raw HTML we will get menu links and stuff but that could be interesting as well we don't want to have certain extensions we don't want to get mp4s and CSS files um, SVGs and stuff that's part of like the the head tags right scripts and stuff so we save this um, go back here edit save and we have all the links that is on that page scraped so let's do the same with images uh, article images 
uh, and you could of course do this on a portion of a site so if you want to create a gallery from a certain portion you can use then the DOM selector to get that specific part right so it's very flexible when you get stuff from other places so this is the image extractor I want to do in this case um, and we take the raw HTML there's not really any settings here so we save again uh, I will just fix this display right away so it doesn't show original images that might be very big we link to the file and we save and we have all the images that was there right and there's also same thing I don't know if this actually links to any files here probably not right is this a PDF perhaps no so I can just show you how you would set it up it probably will not create something now but what you can do is you can take a file field uh, article PDFs we call it PDF is just example you can do anything here unlimited and then you have the allowed file extensions and then it's gonna search for the allowed file extensions then so if there is PDFs it's gonna fill that up here now then let's see no there wasn't anything but yeah if it had PDFs it would do that as well uh, it can search for emails I guess if we look at the source code let's see here if there's some no there's not a at sign anywhere so it's not gonna find any emails I'm gonna add later so it can do regex as well so you can search basically for anything uh, from a file um, and that way you can migrate from some old website you might have right and yeah that's it everything is extremely alpha right now don't use it in production please report bugs I'm gonna uh, fix the documentation how it works to write plugins please add plugins uh, there is a roadmap for me personally and there is one for my company as I said some things that our company does might not be open source but you're free to do it yourself right uh, but uh, definitely on the roadmap is a yeah hey hey Jen uh, I, I just need access to it hopefully uh, freely while I develop because it's a pretty expensive service so I have been in contact with them but that should be in their own interest right um, so that's it use it I hope you like it and yeah let me know what you think about it uh, in the comments let me know about ideas for plugins because there's probably a lot of stuff I haven't thought about um, and uh, yeah report bugs Thank you.